Thank you. I'd like to um, ask Mr. Cohen and Ms. Korsnick uh, what we could be doing more of. Um, I know we have a prize in this for uh, nuclear designs that operate off of spent fuel and allow a vehicle for us to go through the spent fuel waste stockpiles that are located mostly at the industrial sites where the power plant was. Uh, what more could we be doing to make sure that this technology that we're encouraging doesn't lose its focus on that aspect of the problem set we're dealing with, um, to make sure that a focus on repurposing spent fuel stays at the heart of uh, innovation. Mr. Cohen first, Ms. Korsnick. Thanks, thanks, Jim. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Senator Whitehouse. Um, I don't consider myself to be an expert on this on this particular topic, but um, there is clearly a po uh, a lot of opportunity to, from my understanding, from my staff's research, to uh, look at some advanced technologies for reprocessing. That are not the traditional technologies and for reuse of spent fuel. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm well beyond my technical depth in describing those, but, the, but what I understand is that there are a number of research areas that are that really could use more funding. Um, that the US is behind on this. There are a lot of good ideas, but there's not much funding in that in that space. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that high level that there's a lot that probably could be done with federal RD and, and demonstration. Of, uh, of this uh, advanced fuel reprocessing and modes other than the traditional MOX reprocessing, for example. And I don't have details to offer, but we could, at the committee's request, come back with some more specific ideas. Ms. Korsnick? Uh, yes. Ms. Cohen, let, do take that as a QFR and get back to me if you would. And Ms. Korsnick, please proceed. Yes, thank you. Um, I would just offer, in fact, I think there was an announcement this week um, between Argonne National Lab and Oaklo uh, to uh, explore uh, some reprocessing ideas. So that tells you that uh, the wheels are moving in terms of people being um, interested in, in reprocessing. I know there's other private companies that are also uh, interested in exploring um, reprocessing. I, I would just add that even if we reprocess, it still requires us to have a long-term repository. And so I think ultimately we need this broader conversation on um, the used fuel uh, sort of final solution. And I, I think the reprocessing adds um, a, a great element, uh, as you mentioned, in terms of being able to use this. We call it used fuel, but you know, there's 95% good energy still in this thing we call used fuel. And, um, and so it's an excellent opportunity for us to tap into it. And um, as, uh, as Mr. Cohen said, I'm happy to uh, bring back more ideas um, with some additional uh, QFRs. I think the danger here is that the economics get misaligned and um, companies that are having to follow uh, what for them is the best economic path will go down wrong paths if we haven't got the economics of this aligned properly in the same way that safely operating nuclear plants were closed to open natural gas facilities that polluted a lot more for economic reasons that would have evaporated if the harm and cost of the natural gas emissions had simply been taken into account as they should have been. It was an economic misfire but it created bad decisions out in the real world because companies follow real dollars, not ideal dollars. And my worry here is that it's going to cost a little bit more and take a little bit more trouble and effort to deal with repurposed fuel than it is to simply start new. And if we allow that to happen, then we will have inadvertently choked off the innovation that could provide a way to put what is now dangerous, toxic, expensive waste with no plan for dealing with it into a productive use. 
So I hope we can continue to focus on that and make sure we don't set up an economic system in which we inadvertently steer people away from solving that problem instead of towards solving that problem. Um, Mr. Cohen, you mentioned hydrogen. Um, is nuclear power a potential source for what we would call green hydrogen? Well, yeah. Senator, if, if by that you mean zero carbon hydrogen. That's what sure. I mean. Absolutely. Uh, so there are a number of good studies out on that. Um, most recently, um, there was an analysis of the potential even for the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant in California uh, to uh, co-produce electricity and hydrogen. And it, that report went into great detail on how that could be done. This is not rocket science. Um, the, the technology is well understood. Um, electrolysis has been around for many, many decades. Um, but with the particular advantage of nuclear in producing hydrogen is the potential to couple uh, electricity production with high temperature heat, which, as I understand, it makes the hydrogen production process much more uh, efficient. Uh, I believe there are now four pilots, maybe even six now underway under previous legislation um, authorized by Congress um, to demonstrate this at very small scale. Um, the next step um, for the U.S. is to scale those up to a much larger level. Um, in fact, the most recent uh, Infrastructure Act uh, includes a provision for a hydrogen hub that would be nuclear-based. So yes, absolutely, the technical capability is there. Hydrogen is going to be needed at large scale uh, to displace gas and oil, and um, nuclear could definitely be part of that zero-carbon mix. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you to all the witnesses.